Hey, what's going on there guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG and today we're going to be taking a look at a deck tech for 50 Shades of Grey Merchant for the Theros Season of Standard. This is basically a mono black uh, devotion deck with a splash of green for some stuff in the main board and the sideboard that you guys are going to see here in a second. Uh, myself and my friend Ryan Rep, we worked on this and put it together and we ultimately went back and forth about what cards we wanted to have for this flash of green in the deck to give us a edge against certain matchups. So uh, we're going to talk about that here as we get to those cards, but the entire deck list is down in the description below where you guys can check it out. There's also a deck list via tappedout.net that you guys can check out down there and be sure to check out the other links in the description as well. So. Let's start out here and take a look at it. So let's separate the spells from the lands in the main board. So there we go. And let's start taking a look at it. So the first card that we have is Pack Rat. So Pack Rat is a three of for us. We initially didn't start with playing Pack Rat in this deck when we built it. We moved away from Pack Rat and we were uh, playing Lifebane Zombie over the Pack Rat just because we got the ability to look at our opponent's hand and rip things away if they were playing green or white creatures. But Pack Rat is really, really good and it's really annoying for a lot of decks that don't have answers like Detention Sphere or Supreme Verdict for it. So if they don't have a easy, uh, man efficient w way of wiping out all of our Pack Rats, we pretty much just build our huge army by discarding cards and paying the activation cost and we uh, just get a large army of increasingly more powerful pack rats each turn. Uh, so we have three of those. We have uh, four Night Veil Spectres. So Night Veil Spectre is pretty much uh, useful in this deck because it adds the devotion for us. So uh, it adds three black devotion for us when it's on the battlefield. Uh, it's a 2-3 flyer and whenever it hits our opponent and deals combat damage to them, we exile the top card of their library and we can play cards exiled with Night Veil Spectre. Uh, which is pretty nice, especially if it's on color for us. Uh, we have Desecration Demon in this deck being a just enormous 6-6 six, six creature for 4 mana with flying. At the beginning of each combat, an opponent may sacrifice a creature. If that player does, tap Desecration Demon and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him. Ultimately, he's a really easy way to be able to hit our opponent, especially with all the removal that we have in our deck. If we're able to clear the board of creatures that our opponents have and they don't have anything that we can that they can sack into Desecration Demon, we can just take advantage of that and start hitting them for a huge chunk of their life. And uh, usually the only time the Desecration Demon is really bad is when our opponent's able to make a lot of tokens off of something like Elspeth or put a lot of creatures that they don't worry about sacking onto the battlefield each turn. Uh, we also have one Erebos, God of the Dead, in the main board. I also have one more in the sideboard. Uh, Erebos is great up against matchups like the Mirror Match and also Esper Control because both of those decks can gain a huge amount of life and keep us from winning the game easily. Uh, but 5-7 for 4 Indestructible, as long as um, our Devotion is less than 5, he's not a creature, so as long as we have 5 or more Devotion, he is a 5-7 Indestructible creature that can just swing and bash. Uh, our opponents can't gain life, which is great because it keeps our opponent from being able to gain life off of Grey Merchant and Sphinx's Revelation. And uh, for two mana, one generic, one black, pay two life, we get to draw a card. Uh, we have Grey Merchant, which this deck is basically based around. So uh, the Grey Merchant is fantastic because it's a 2-4 for five creature that whenever it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X amount of life and we gain X amount of life where, uh, where X is the devotion to black that we have. So uh, with Grey Merchant, we want to start building up things like um, the Underworld connections that we have. We have Whip of Erebos and especially cards like Night Veil Spectre. Uh, we just build up our devotion based on those cards and then we play our Grey Merchant and we're either able to put a huge amount of distance between ourselves and our opponent or just be able to win the game outright from there. Another thing that I want to mention is that Pack Rat, whenever it makes tokens of itself, uh, the tokens do have the uh, mana cost on them as well, so uh, Pack Rat is going to add devotion towards uh, Grey Merchant as well, and the tokens add devotion towards Grey Merchant, so that's always nice. Um, but I did mention Underworld Connections, so let me grab an English one and put it on top. So we get to Enchant a land, and the Enchanted land has tap, pay one life, and we get to draw cards. So we're playing four of these. Ultimately, it's going to fuel our Pack Rat, but it's also going to allow us to draw a lot of cards and be able to draw into the different things that we have in our deck, whether 
Uh, it means like getting a removal spell or getting like a thought seize because we know our opponent has something good in their hand or it gives us information to play around the things that they do have. Uh, ultimately, being able to draw more cards is always good and the, the cost of one life per turn to draw an extra card is definitely very reasonable. Uh, we have two Whip of Erebos, so uh, creatures we control have lifelink for four mana. Four mana tap, and we get to return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, and we exile it at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else, and we can only activate it at a sorcery speed. Uh, but Whip of Erebos is nice because we can whip back cards like Grey Merchant if our opponent puts them into the grave. Um, if we're playing up against things like Desecration Demon, we can sack Grey Merchant into a Desecration Demon and be able to whip it back to get another trigger off and uh, use the Devotion and gain and drain off of it. But um, with Whip of Erebos, it gives us a punch whenever we're swinging him with cards like Desecration Demon, whenever we're playing up against the aggro matchups. Um, but ultimately, it's just going to allow us to recur the creatures that we have and have a few more hits, if not the uh, the Siphon siphoning off of Grey Merchant. So we have two of those. Uh, we have four Thoughtseize. So Thoughtseize is just useful for being able to rip things that our opponents have away from them. It only pretty much sides out up against the aggro matchups where our opponent is just trying to beat us as quick as possible. Uh, we get to choose a non-land card from our opponent's hand and they have to discard it and we lose two life. Well, we have one Abrupt Decay, so it can't be countered by spells or abilities, and we destroy a non-land permanent with converted mana cost 3 or less. Useful for getting rid of things like Detention Sphere, and also any creatures that are 3 converted mana cost or lower, and we just don't allow our opponent to be able to use them, especially in the case of the Mirror, whenever our opponent's playing Night Veil Spectres too, we get to get rid of them pretty easily. Uh, we have one ultimate price to destroy um, not uh, monocolored creatures, so up against a variety of things, Storm Breath, Dragons, Arbor, Colossus, uh, there are a lot of things in the format that it hits. Uh, Devour Flesh to force our opponent to sack a creature and they gain life equal to the creature's toughness. It's also useful for us whenever we're down on life and we need to sack a Desecration Demon to gain back life to stay in the game. So uh, it's a nice little trick that we can do. Uh, here is Downfall to be able to destroy target creature at Planeswalker at instant speed. We're playing four of those. And then the uh, the last card that we have, one of my lands is actually sticking. The last card that we have is Golgari Charm in the main board. So uh, it has a variety of modes. It has uh, all creatures get minus one, minus one until the end of the turn or destroy um, target enchantment or regenerate each creature that we control. Uh, so with Golgari Charm, it's nice because the minus one minus one gets rid of any um, any X one creatures their opponents may have if they're playing aggro and they have like Fire Drinker Satyrs and stuff like that. We can get rid of all of those. Uh, it also destroys enchantment, so it destroys things like Underworld Connections, Whip of Erebos, uh, Hammer of Perforos, Detention Sphere, destroys all those things. And uh, it also allows us to regenerate each creature that we control if our opponent uses a Supreme Verdict or Spot Removal against something that we want to keep on the board. Um, it's usually a sideboard card, but because of the implications that it has it, during this season of Standard, it is definitely worthy enough to be played in the main board, so I did take the initiative of putting it in the main board as a one of. Uh, so those are the spells that we have in the main board. Now taking a look at the lands that we have. So we're running 25 lands. Uh, I have four Overgrown Tomb. I have three Golgari Guild Gates. I'm playing four Temple of Mystery. The Temple of Mystery is basically for the Scry. It's also another green source for our deck. And it is going to allow us to still be able to play our Net Veil Spectre on turn whenever we want it. And uh, ultimately, it's it just increases the amount of green sources that we have and that we can play in our deck. Of course, we don't have the Golgari Scry land, so Temple of Mystery is the closest that we can get to it, and it's definitely still fine. The Scry is very much so worth it. Uh, we have four Mutavolt, which plays into Pack Rat because it has um, all creature types and it can fuel the Pack Rats that we already have on the table. Uh, outside of just being a 2-2 creature, that we can turn it into a 2-2 creature and just start bashing. So uh, up against the slower decks, we can put some uh, put some hits in in the early turns before our opponent's really able to do anything. And then we just have 10 Swamps. So the, uh, the 10 Swamps are the rest of the lands that we have in the land base. And then for the last portion of the deck, we have our sideboard here. So uh, for the sideboard, we have four Freakus Cure. So the Freakus Cure deals two damage to the target creature and we gain two life. Basically useful for the aggro matchups where our opponent is just trying to 
play things like red deck wins where they just try to outrace us by dealing as much damage as possible. We're able to get rid of uh, one of their creatures with two toughness or less, and uh, we can gain two life as well, which is great. Uh, I also have one more Erebos for the mirror match and also for the control deck, like I mentioned, so we can keep them from using Sphinx's Revelation uh, in the control matchup, and we can keep um, the mirror match from being able to gain life off of Grey Merchant. Uh, I have... Life Bane Zombie is a three of in the sideboard, so we did end up keeping this in the entire 75 that we play in the deck, but uh, it shifted to the sideboard so that we can set it in up against the matchups where our opponent's playing green or white creatures and a lot of them. That way we can see what they have in their hand, we can potentially exile one of their creatures, and uh, we can still have that 3-1 creature with Intimidate that can swing in against them. Uh, one Dark Betrayal for the Mirror Match to get rid of Night Veil Spectres, Desecration, Demons, and the such. And it's also useful for any other decks that are playing a lot of black creatures, things like Black Red Midrange, and also Black Red Aggro, Dark Betrayal is useful. Uh, one Abrupt DK for decks that are running a lot of low converted mana cost cards and creatures permanents mainly. Um, so it's useful up against like Aggro and Mono Blue Devotion. Uh, another Golgari Charm to be able to deal with decks that are playing a lot of enchantments, and it's, it's especially good for control because we can uh, counteract any Supreme Verdicts and Detention Spheres our opponents play. Uh, one Ultimate Price to be able to get rid of monocolored creatures. Uh, one Gaze of Granite because it's good up against decks that are running a lot of low converted mana cost permanents, things, uh, decks like Aggro and also Mono Blue Devotion. This is kind of our ace in the hole against Mono Blue, uh, being able to gaze and destroy a lot of their... Uh, cards that are on the battlefield, uh, so it's good for that. It's also good for the mirror match, uh, and especially when we're on the draw, where we can be playing from behind and still blow up everything that our opponent's doing. And to duress, so duress is for the matchups where our opponent is playing a lot of non-creature spells in their hand, so things like planeswalkers and powerful removal or things of that nature, we can duress them and be able to take things away from them, and it's especially good for... Um, Decks like Black Red Midrange and the Esper, uh, the Esper Control variants and Blue White Control and any other control decks that may be appearing in the meta um, at this time. So that is the main board and sideboard that we have for Black Green 50 Shades of Grey Merchant. Like I said, the entire deck list is down below where you guys can check it out. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for more Magic the Gathering content. Until next time, guys, peace out.